And now, here on London Weekend Television, it is time to change channel. To That's Bernard Braden's show, really. <laughs> this program where distressed viewers write and tell us the terrible time they've had dealing with smarmy con men, and we laugh at them. <laughs> Cyril? Esther, I need a viewer in Newcastle under Grime who sent us this unusual. I'm sorry, could you hold the cue cards up a little higher, please? Thank you. Who sent it? Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> now, this is what housewife Mrs. Jean Fictional of Stepney got when she bought a package of tights advertised at half price. <laughs> well, Mrs. Fictional didn't want to cause a lot of bother, so she took the easy way out and just sawed her leg off. <laughs> now, of course, that's easier said than done. So we went out in the streets and asked viewers, how are you at sawing your leg off? <laughs> what, me? <laughs> oh, on the television, oh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a try. <laughs> what do I have to do? Just saw it like this? <laughs> she saw me leg. Yes, I did once. It was it's sticking out the top of my foot. Oh, excuse me, Sorry, sir. I can't stop. I'm in a hurry. Is this the No, that's my other set of teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've sawn it back on again by mistake. <laughs> Legs off. That sounds like fun. Can I have a go? Well, only if you're absolutely mad and an utter and complete loony. Daily Express. legless and ending up half cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a moment, the story of a man who's at his wit's end. Our scriptwriter. <laughs> <laughs> Esther. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> no, on to a more serious story. The story of this man. His name's Mr. Hitler. And this week, he wrote to us. Dear Esther, I am out of my mind with worry. It's driving me absolutely bonkers. And if I have to put up with much more of this, I shall go berserk. So for heaven's sake, will you stop showing those ridiculous photographs of me while you read out my letters? <laughs> Mr Hitler had an even bigger problem. On November the 12th, he rang up Poland. Uh, good morning. Can I invade you, please? Why? Well, I'd like to take over your country, please. It's part of my plan to rule the world. Why, pal? Who do you think you are? Harry Seacum? Get knotted. Well, that sounded rather unfair to us. But on November the 13th, Mr Hitler rang up Poland again. He said... Good morning. Uh, can I invade you, please? No. Look, I've just burnt the Reichstag. Well, have a Chinese takeaway instead. You're not invading us. Things weren't going very well for Mr. Hitler. On the 3rd of December, he marched into Warsaw, but found the place had changed. I thought this was Poland. <laughs> Sorry, pal. Poland's gone bankrupt and has been wound up by the courts. We're operating under the name of Hawaii now. Hello, hello. See? I give up. Mr. Hitler had had enough, so in the end he left Poland, went away, and invaded Beatrice Krint of Chingford instead. <laughs> so be warned, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to bring a country to its knees, 
do it the proper way. Join the Labour government. <laughs> Finally. Cyril? Finally, Esther, my thanks to Mr. Arthur Wett of Birmingham, who sent us this sharp cut. Stay. <laughs> Yes, sir? Uh, Norman Strait, man. I have an appointment with the nose titian. Can I get your National Hail? Uh, well, it's for London Weekend Television. Oh, well, that'll be National Hail then. <laughs> Then you are uh, Norman Straitman. Ah, yes, come for the regulation sinus checkup for your appearance on the South Bank show. Yes, that's right. <laughs> right. Let's give your nose a quick test, shall we? Sit <laughs> <laughs> down. Now, I want you to close up one nostril. Hold that there, please. Yeah. Thank you. Now, then, I want you to smell this letter. Why? No, it's an S. <laughs> <laughs> now, try this one. Give it a good sniff. Oh. No, wrong again. It's an N. <laughs> C N there N. N. Now then, this one. Ah. No, it's an M. <laughs> Not too good on those, are we? Yes, my nice. Now, I just want you to have a look at this chart and tell me what you can see on it. Uh, o. <laughs> R O R A O O R A O R O R O R O O R O R A. Thank you. Sorry about that, but it is cheaper than buying her a Wurzel's record. <laughs> now then, let's have a look at the old nose. Glasses off, please. There we are. Now then. This is a British rail pork pie. <laughs> What's the pie? Oh, don't worry about that. It's his birthday tomorrow. Right. Now then. I want you to tell me when you can smell it properly. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. How's that? No, still nothing. Hmm. Right, let's try this one. <laughs> well, that's one for you then, sir. <laughs> or does he have complete signal congestion, ideal conditions for a conversation with Melvin Bragg? But I can't go on the show with this thing on. It looks ridiculous. Hmm. Well, you can always try a set of contact nostrils. Contact nostrils? Oh, yes. I wear them myself. Look. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so, no. Well, look, those are our noses. See if you can pick one. Oh, right. Oh, it's almost time for the broadcast to the nation. Let's see what conditions are like now. Against a modern tyranny, never surpassed in the dark, lamentable catalogue of the TV Times. <laughs> Even as I impersonate this voice to you today, I have to report that the four cameramen who bravely attempted to stay awake during an interview with Antonia Frazier are still not responding to buckets of cold water. <laughs> but are we downhearted? I can answer that in one word. Yes. <laughs> we shall fight on. We shall stand up to the soporific forces of late-night Saturday viewing. Where to meet them? Square on. Uh, never to surrender to the boredom. Oh, there. <laughs> we interrupt this snoring to bring you an urgent news flash from outer space. More tea, anyone? Thank you. And don't think I won't find the other three packets that are still missing. Anyway, Norman should be down soon to say goodbye to us all. Well, I'm ready, everybody. Oh, Norman, if only we 
you were rich. If only we had some money put by, you could buy yourself out of this wretched South Bank. <laughs> but we haven't any money, Vera. Only a miracle can save me now. Now, oh, who's that? Yes! Norman Street Man. No, I've already got one, thank you. <laughs> what have you done? It's. it's for you. Well, I don't know if you heard it on the news, sir, but late last night, higher organic life forms suddenly evolved in 44 outer galactic star systems. Probably suffered severe brain damage and formed themselves into football teams. As a result, 22 matches were played, and the interstellar pools jackpot this week has run to a record six figures. You're having us on. No, no, no. No, no. You see, I'm from the Little Hope Football Pools Company, and it gives me and my company tremendous, enormous pleasure to tell you that you, Mr. Norman Straightman... Yes? ...haven't won anything at all. <laughs> Good day, sir. Oh, well, I suppose this is it. I mustn't keep Mr. Bragg waiting. Goodbye, then. <laughs> And if only you didn't have to go. Is there nothing can bring an end to the barbaric program? <laughs> The programme is also being shown on BBC One and BBC Two. Radios One, Two, Three and Four and the independent commercial stations. <laughs> Hospital radio, police wave bands, in the lift at Bourne and Hollingsworth, <laughs> address systems and being shouted through rolled up bits of newspaper at people in the street. <laughs> we are trying to go to the lavatory because we've locked the door. <laughs> now follows a party political broadcast and the party people's passes. Thank <laughs> you.